Hey, and welcome back to the third of five principles. And this one is called the Liskov substitution principle. Let's break down what this principle means. When we talk about this principle, we're going to be using the words substitutability and preserved behavior. According to the Liskov substitution principle, any instance of a derived class should be able to substitute the base class without affecting the correctness of the program. Basically meaning we can take any subclass of its superclass, no matter what, we substitute any of them in for the base class or the superclass, and it's not gonna change how the program behaves. Which brings us to the next part, preserving behavior. The derived classes should preserve the behavior of the base class. Basically what I just said. You can take the base class and you can take all of these derived classes that you have over here, substitute them for the base class, any one of them, and the behavior of the program won't change. Let's dive in and just look at an example of this. All right, so for the example, we're gonna have a vehicle interface and then we're gonna have two implementations, a bicycle and a car. Now we should be able to take any implementation of this vehicle even if we had 20 different implementations, no matter which one we use in our code, they're all going to preserve the behavior of the interface vehicle. Okay, so the vehicle interface has a start engine method. So any implementation has to use this method. So let's look at car first. Well, the method is called start engine. So a car does have an engine. So when we call this method, we're simply just going to print out starting a car. So the next vehicle is a bicycle. It has to implement the method start engine, but a bicycle doesn't have an engine. So this violates the Liskov substitution principle. We can't replace a vehicle with a bicycle because a bicycle doesn't have an engine. So the behavior isn't going to be the same. Now, yes, I have in here, I'm throwing a new unsupported operation exception. It doesn't matter if you have a system.printout bicycle doesn't have an engine or whatever you say. The idea is that we can't substitute a bicycle for a vehicle because a bicycle doesn't have an engine. Okay, so how are we gonna solve this? Well, there's a couple different ways. The way that I'm gonna be doing it is I'm gonna have a couple different interfaces and each interface is gonna do something different. So one might start anything that has an engine and another just might start a general vehicle. And this method of solving it is also used in another principle that I'll get to soon. All right, so let's begin making the interfaces. So we're gonna have two of them. The first one's gonna be called non-engine powered vehicle. And this is simply gonna have one method, public void start vehicle. We're going to create another one. This one's going to be an engine powered vehicle. And this is also going to have one method, public void start engine. Okay, so now what we can do is we can have multiple different classes, but we're going to recreate the bicycle and the car, except this time the car is going to implement the engine powered vehicle and the bicycle is going to implement the non-engine powered vehicle. So let me code that real quick. Okay, so now we have both of our implementations, the bicycle and the car. As you can see here, the bicycle implements the non-engine powered vehicle. And this works because we're just starting a vehicle now. We're not saying we're starting an engine. And this is preserving the behavior of the interface. And now we have the car, which implements the engine powered vehicle. And this makes sense because it implements the method start engine. Now we could also have a truck which implements the engine powered vehicle and that would make sense because you would use the start engine method on a truck. Now we're not quite done yet. There are a few other things that you should know for the Liskov substitution principle. In their book, Program Development in Java, Abstraction, Specification, and Object-Oriented Design, uh, Liskov and Gutag describe the violations of this principle. And to be honest, there are quite a few of them and they can be a little wordy to understand at first. So I'm going to try and make it simpler to understand and go over the main ones that I think are important and that you should know. A subclass should require nothing more and promise nothing less. No, that's not a riddle, even though it kind of sounds like it. But let's say we have a base class that has a method that will print out any numbers less than 100. And then we implement or override the method from that base class. And we say we want to print out any numbers from 0 or less than 50, basically. We want to print out any numbers less than 50. The behavior is changed, correct? We technically changed it, but we're preserving the behavior. It does not violate the principle. All we said was in the extended class, we want any number less than 50. So any number less than 50 is going to preserve the behavior of the base class, which said it needed any number less than 100. However, if I have another class that extends that base class and says, now I want to have any number, I want to print out any number less than 200. Now this violates it because if it prints out 150, well, that number is not less than the base class method that said it only wants numbers less than 100. 
Okay, so that violates the principle because we can't substitute that class and, pres and preserve the behavior of the base. But the next one is keep exceptions in check. Basically, don't throw more general or broader exceptions in a subclass than a superclass. If in a superclass or the base class, you have an unsupported or an arithmetic exception, in the subclass, don't throw just exception. And for the last two, stick to the is a relationship. Make sure a subclass can be used as a substitute for the superclass without causing problems. And finally, don't override methods in a subclass that aren't meant to be overridden in a superclass. Okay, well, we just went over the Liskov substitution principle. And this isn't the easiest one to understand. So if you didn't quite get something, just leave a comment down there and I'll get, I'll get to you. Watch this video for the previous one if you haven't seen it. And I'll see you next time.